Right, so welcome back everybody. We've got something a little bit different today. I've come to see my mate Rick. He just lived down the road from my dad and uh, he's got his own YouTube channel. So what's that called, Rick? Brew a bit, Rickshaw. And as you can see, he's got one of the signs we printed him and he displays that in all these videos. So if you want to check out what Rick does, he's going to tell you a bit now what this, all this is because this means nothing to me. So go ahead, Rick. So what we do on the channel, we do a bit of building. We do a, a lot of brewing. So... This is something we built. This is called a kegerator. So this serves beer. So we brew beer from grain. I don't know if we're in shot with that. Can you see that? Yep, you can see all that yep. there. So I buy grain, I buy hops, I buy yeast, I treat my water and we brew some good beer. So we've got uh, a heater in a fridge with a controller with a thermostat in it. So that keeps it at a certain degree when we're fermenting so it doesn't stress the yeast. We brew it, we serve it on a kegerator. So this is a fridge, so that's a kegerator. If it's done by a freezer, it's called a keezer. Genius, I don't know who come up with, <laughs> come up with that. So we've got CO2 at the back, feeding in, and we keg the beer into these pressurized corny kegs. So these originally, I think, some are Pepsi, but so you know on a bar, when you've got the mixers for the soft drinks, yep. they're them. 19 litres you can pressurise them. So you fill them with beer, you sanitise them, fill them with beer and we feed CO2 in at a certain pressure and we serve beer lines out to the taps. I've never actually noticed when I watch your channel that that's actually a fridge. That's a fridge. <laughs> I've never noticed that that you just said. Which is a kegerator now and then we get beer out. Straight on tap like the pub isn't it? Yeah. Temperature controlled. Lovely job, That's all easily good. made, absolutely super, loads of instructional videos. So did you do a video of this showing you making this? I didn't. I was going to say, because I don't remember seeing but that on the channel. Some of the taps being fitted, uh, Queen Jubilina, granted my wish I wanted some new taps, so that was a video, Queen Jubilina came without me knowing, I didn't know till I looked back on the video, and okay. magic me some taps on. All right. That's easy enough fitting. <laughs> <laughs> So we're temperature controlled, everything's temperature controlled, and we can brew anything from a Pilsner I've got in there at the moment. On tap I've got a Kvike, which is a yeast, really fast um, yeast, from Germany, yeah. France, with strata hops and a single malt. We've got a Pilsner, we've got a chocolate orange stout, and a Murgy straight from Four Priest Brewery, that's a clone. I've, it's the first one I've ever done. It's the first yeah. time I've ever decided to have a go at somebody else. It was a kit actually, an all grain kit, but it's the first time I've brewed somebody else's beer. I normally make it up as I go along. Right, so from start to finish, do, does it take the same amount of time for everything you do to brew a beer or it does it vary? No, so the brew day is five hours. Right. By the time you've done the mash, the boil, yeah. the cool down, and kegged it uh, in, into the not into the fermenter. Yeah. Then it depends what you do. A pilsner, that pilsner is going to take about two weeks to ferment. Then I need to cold crash it and cold condition it for about five six weeks. Okay, right. Where this kvike smash that fermented because of the yeast, it fermented out in two days. Right. Then I cold crashed it. Yeah. I had that on tap in a week. Bloody Force carved it. That's and pretty quick then, isn't it? Really. It, it wasn't clear in a week because I don't use any finings. I don't. I don't use any chemicals. No, no, right, that's fair um, enough. Apart from natural chemicals, seaweed to, to bind the proteins in the boil together. Yeah. No, I don't use any chemicals. I don't use any finings or anything like that. It's all natural stuff. Oh, excellent. So I'm guessing most of my beer might even be vegan. All right, I'll have to get Stacey oh, on it with a fantastic like mum yeah. channel, vegan vegetarian. <laughs> so how many subscribers you got roughly? I'm about eight off 800 at the minute. Right, let's see if we can get him to the 800, but it'll be nice if we can push him up to the 1,000. Wouldn't it? That'd be brilliant. So we'll leave a link down below for Rick's channel. Um, but he's called me here for another reason today. What you got for me to have a look at? I've got a couple of lawnmowers. Oh, we do love a lawnmower. a lawnmower. Right. So we'll have a look at what you've got. And if after that, you've got 10 minutes to nip up to my dad's house and see, there's a couple up there you can have a look at. Absolutely. Uh, they're not ready yet. They need a bit of work, but you can put your name on one if you want. So we'll have a look in his garden, see what he's got. Right then, Rick, so what you got here then? Right, this is a Mountfield. Has it got a Honda engine in it? <laughs> That's a, a Mountfield engine, I believe, on right. that one, yeah. So push, I'm getting a bit old to push it about now. Starts nicely, and I've got... <laughs> I see you've done a bit of body work on this one. This one, yeah, it's had a bit of work. Uh, I've tried to look at a few channels. The idea <laughs> was, so this one's self-propelled. 
So I've got this, don't want to push it. I was going to swap the deck over. Yep, yep. And make one good mower. Right. But, I mean, I trawled the internet, I trawled YouTube, I just can't find a decent lawnmower channel. There's anymore. none out there, I don't think, no. There's just no instructional videos how to do it. I mean, they haven't been started today. I haven't. I haven't because you don't do nothing, like you don't do none of this winterised business, do you? No. You literally put it away at the end of summer, in the shed, bring it back, back out again. next season, and uh, I'll they... tell you what, that one has got two year old fuel in it, and it struck up first time when I brought it out. Yeah? Because I've got a 10 litre jerry can, and I just didn't, didn't use that much. That's, that's what people do, they fill the jerry cans, don't they? Just, yeah. They could go, like, like you say, a couple of years, so yeah, if you want to fire them up, see what they can do. Should we see? Is this where it's going to tell me? Is this it's going to show you now? Do you want to feel that the cold? And yeah, well. Tell the viewers that I'm not. Everything's. Everything. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all cold, people. <laughs> Sounds alright, that, like, doesn't it? Quite on that. This one hasn't been. I used that last week. We'll do the cold touch and prove it again to him. Look. I mean, that hasn't, this hasn't been struck up for five weeks. Spot on, isn't it? All drives, yeah. You can't complain. You can't knock them under engines. You can't, can you? They no. They never let me down. I mean, say I've done a bit of body work. Oh, just a bit. Just tidying up What's a that? Bit. A side shoot, is it? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a special collection bag that goes on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, sir. That's got a little bit. Ah, it's not, they the wear on the corners anyway, don't they? But, but this one's. No, they like you say, they're two honest mowers, isn't they? At the end yeah. of the day. Yeah, like you say, that one's a bit beyond repair, so. It's just good for the spares, like yeah, we yeah. say. The engine's decent on it anyway, isn't it? I haven't got room for three. Oh, no. So you're trying to shift these on, are you? <laughs> 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 I'll say, I was going to, uh, like I said, bolt them together, but... I like the idea of this, because you can check the blade to the side there. Yeah. You ain't got to tip it back. No, see, see the quality. Is that an optional extra, is it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so... Do you fancy nipping up my old man's and see what we've got up there? Let's have a look. Let's go. We'll see you up there, folks. Right, folks, so we're back at my dad's house now. You can see we've got a couple of mowers here. Rick's had a quick little look around them. Little look around. <laughs> little look around. <laughs> He's had a quick look around them. Yeah, they're both self-drive, wide cuts, and that's what Rick was looking for. So uh, we've got the Mountfield here with the Honda on. A bit more of like a commercial mower, this one. That looks like a four-wheel drive off-roader, that does, it's doesn't it? It's a bit it? of a beast, that. Don't that know. one has got a gearbox issue at the minute, so that might take me a couple of weeks, two to three weeks to get dug in, see what it is. If you needed parts, uh, it's another sort of three week wait for Rick. So he's opted to go for this one. It does need a polish up. Um, there was a video on this on my dad's channel, his retro restore one. So if anyone's interested in that, go check that out. Um, it is fully serviced and all that. I've just got to get a bit of fresh fuel in it. And I say, you know how I am with mowers. If I like to uh, sell one, I do give them clean up. I say Rick weren't too bothered about how it looked, but I just want things to be right, Rick, so. Is it more expensive because it's a famous mower? No, it's going to be more expensive because it's getting a valet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, he's going to go for this one. He can have this one by the weekend, I should say. Um, I might do a premiere on this one, actually. Ooh. Friday night. It'll be birthday Friday. See. Oh. It's Evie's birthday today. It is. I thought it was Evie's birthday today. So happy birthday when you see her. Well, she'll be watching this. so you can Happy go. birthday, Evie! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'm going to stop waffling about this now. So I'm going to sort this out for Rick. You can have it for the weekend if you want it for the weekend. Right then, so I'm just going to show Rick now because he's interested in the old TZR. You ain't seen it yet? No. Yeah. So we're going to have a look at the TZR. Uh, hopefully I want to be getting that back on the channel very soon. Um, we're just going to be dropping the engine in, I think, next. And I want to start on the bodywork, uh, getting the tank done, I think. There'll be a video on that because there's a bit of a damage on the tank and it's in bluey purple and it's going white to red. So we're just going to uh, have a look in there. Right, folks, so Rick's just actually left now. We did just film an outro, but I've just thought I'd pop back in and uh, I think I'm going to get this lawnmower sorted out now. So uh, it won't take too long because I say it has been all fully serviced and everything, but I just need to give this uh, deck a bit of a going over. As I said before, I like to send stuff out nice and clean. It just shows to take a bit of pride and care in your work. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to give it a bit of a clean off and then I'm going to get the battery drill with a, a polishing pad on it and a buffer and uh, we're going to give it a quick go over all that and hopefully we can bring a bit of this uh, dullness back. 
I say Rick weren't too bothered about this, how the dullness looked. He was happy to take it like that. He was just concerned that it was a reliable engine and the deck, most importantly, was solid, which on this one it is as well. And uh, I do remember buying this one. I've had it about two years. I was telling Rick, you can see there's no wear on these wheels at all because the chap that I bought this off, just one of my neighbours from where I live, um, he bought it brand new and he said to me he only used it three times. Uh, on the third time of cutting it, using it, he actually caught a around the edge of his garden he had like edging slabs to separate the grass from the flower beds and he actually uh, as he was turning the mower he lifted it up and he actually caught the blade on the slab as he was turning the spinning the mower around and uh, it actually Blake broke the boss on it so obviously I bought it with a damaged boss and it was a brand new mower basically so um, the boss has been replaced on it and uh, it's all good to go again. But I say, I, I have left it out in the sunlight for two years and it has made this deck really faded now. So hopefully we're gonna bring it back to a bit of a nicer state and uh, just make it look a bit more presentable. So I'm gonna do that now. Let's take a look at this deck at the start. So as you can see, the deck is uh, all matte finish on it. It's just sun faded basically. It's full of uh, just old dust and dirt where it's just been sat about, where it's been not being used. I say it's all very matted. This has got the optional extra for you to stick a hose on there and uh, clean the underside of the deck. Once you put your hose on there, turn the water on and then start the mower up and the blade actually splashes the water around the deck to clean it. So nice little feature there, a bit of a gimmick maybe. I don't think many people do use them, but just bringing you right around the mower, as you can see, it's a nice solid deck anyway, which is the main concern that Rick had. And just show you under there, it's actually had a new uh, belt case on there as well because that did actually get smashed when the chap did actually hit the uh, concrete slab. Right, for starters then, I've just mixed up a bit of a G101. We use this 50-50, uh, 50% 50 uh, water, 50% G101. So I'm just gonna give this a spray over the whole machine just to get some of these uh, dirty debris off. Get yourself a microfiber and uh, just give it a clean over so we've got a nice uh, surface to start when we're going to do a bit of cutting back on the paintwork otherwise you'll be just swirling in all this dirt and all that and I say it won't matter too much it's only a mirror but if you're doing this on a car you'd want the area cleaned otherwise you'll be swirling all that dirt into your uh, bodywork, which you don't want. And again, you do need to be careful when you do use your drills and all that, because it's only thin paint on these mowers and you can end up flicking the paint off. So there is a little bit of a paint bubble there, but the deck is still solid. So just around the area, I will be careful I say it's not a restoration job this it's just about making it nice for uh, Rick I say a lot of people would have been happy just to sell that as it was right folks so I've just cleaned the mower down now as you saw and I've just got this uh, drill with a waffle pad on it and a bit of uh, G3 regular grade so I'm just going to put a bit on my pad don't need to go too mad and I'm just going to show you this front bit getting done. So just dab that on there like that. You don't need to drill on fast, just put it on your slower speed. Right, so we'll change the pad now. Just get that compound off bit of wipe over and again you normally wouldn't go to this uh, extent on a, a lawn mower but as I say certain mowers it's worth doing it on and uh, with Rick being a neighbour and a friend down the road I want to do it right I probably wouldn't have done this if it was just going to go up on the for sale locally but and then I've just got a bit of G3 uh, polish and this can be quite messy, this stuff. So just go again. We're just gonna give it a bit of a, a buff up polish then. 
Right, so I'm just going to give that a bit of a wipe down now with a cloth. And then we'll see what result we got there. All right, so you can see the nice uh, shine that we've got on that now. It just still needs a little bit of a polish off. But, so that's the shine we've got. And that's what we started with. Look, as you can see, a matte black dull finish. And you just come here, you look at that comparison left to the right. And that is what can sell you your lawnmower and make you a bigger profit. So, for spending 10 minutes just polishing, it goes a long way and uh, it will help you with your sale as well. That looks a hundred times better than that. I'm just going to carry on now, get the sides done and uh, this lawnmower will be pretty much ready to go. So I might even get it down to Rick today if he's still at home. And uh, that's another one out of the way then. So yeah, I'm going to crack on with that and I'll come back to you once it's finished. Right folks, so as you can see, I've gone around the whole mower now. And it looks a hundred times better. I'm well happy with that. It looks fantastic now. I say I probably wouldn't have done this if I was doing it as a, a just a general quick flip mower, but um, this could uh, put you an extra 15 to 20 quid on a sale for a lawnmower. So it can be worth it sometimes, and it's uh, made it look a hundred times better for the sake of maybe 15 minutes work with a drill and a polishing pad we've made an extra 15 to 20 pounds. Obviously not on this lawnmower, I'm just doing this for Rick. So I'm gonna head back down to Rick's now. I won't film that. I'm gonna just drop this off. I'm not sure if he's in, if he's not, I'll just leave it around his backyard and we can sort out the other two mowers coming back another day, so. And uh, I'll catch you next time. And don't forget, what's your channel? Brew a bit Rickshaw, give us link, a look. Link down below. Until next time, we'll see you about. Cheers.